Hi guys, welcome back to StarCraft for Beginners with StarCraft Remastered. Before we get into the main gist of the video, I just want to quickly respond to a comment I received in my Terran Push video and share with you guys the reason why I do not share build orders in my videos. So the reason I do not share build orders is because I believe the concepts and strategies I discuss in the videos will work well with a myriad of different builds. Which build order to re really use depends on the map, the matchup situation given the map, the spawning location and what build order you feel most comfortable given those factors. So to reiterate what I mentioned in my introductory video, if you'd like to see build order videos, there are plenty of other resources on YouTube. My videos will focus on underlying concepts behind certain actions and tactics, and ways to better execute specific strategies to enhance your chances of success in these maneuvers. So with that being said, in this video, I will go over crucial principles of performing a reaver drop or harassment in your opposition's mineral lines. Principle number one, the route which the shuttle takes to your opposition's mineral line should be one where they're not likely or least likely to have enemy units which would spot the shuttle in its looming expedition towards a home of the overlord or Terran confederacy. It is important to have recon ground units or observers placed in strategic positions on the map early in the game so that you have enough vision of the map and intel to inform you of the safety of the chosen route for your Reavers first long haul flight across the Atlantic. Otherwise, if your enemy is aware of the shuttle's incoming, they will likely place anti-air units or defense in time to prevent your Reaver drop from succeeding. Principle number two. Now this is a more advanced principle that can support and enhance Reaver drops, but I do warn you that it requires a lot of practice and above average micromanagement abilities. I'm just going to touch on the underlying concepts here. So when performing a reaver drop at the opposition's mineral lines, you could also pair it up with some sort of deceptive maneuver to get their attention off the mineral lines, such as knocking at your opponent's front door to create a distraction right before your shuttle descends into the heart of the harvester lines. That distraction could be in the form of a fake attack, sort of like sending a group of attacking units in to attack by immediately withdrawing back to safety, or building a pylon near their choke or natural that could draw out a couple of their units and get their attention off the mineral lines briefly. Or if you have enough minerals and there happens to be an overlord, for example, right above an, an unoccupied expansion, you can build a nexus right under the overlord to divert his attention away from his mineral lines. Remember, you can cancel any buildings before they're complete, so it's not a huge financial investment, but this could essentially buy you a few extra seconds that would make the pivotal difference in your Reaver Drop's success or failure. The last thing I'm going to go over is execution. Now, provided you have performed what we went over just now, you should be in the best position to succeed in your Reaver Drop. Now, when your Reaver pops out of the shuttle, Immediately go for the workers on the mineral patches, as there will be a lot more of your opponent's workers harvesting minerals than gas. I know this is not the best example since one reaver was lost, but you get the picture. Finally, like I mentioned in my other videos, don't rely on auto attack. Right click on the most saturated group of workers, and then just watching sheer joy at the bloodbath of Drangor or the fireworks of exploding SCVs. So that brings us to the end of another video. Thanks for watching again guys, and happy reaver dropping!